art, that first art that gave you a ray of hope, that made you think, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. There must be one or there must be an event that changed the course of whatever you believe in. My first breakthrough is when a white man comes from the US and they are looking for artists to teach the African American their own direct craft that is made in Africa. And they are taking 10 from Africa. There is no single woman. So I have some work at the Museum of Natural History in New York. So that work is like a bird and with egg. And this bird is a story that I heard from my parents that this bird cannot have an egg for a long time. And by the time he had this egg, he was so happy. So I call it Eggla, Eggla. When I want to explain to visitors, they say, what is this? So the Oyibo took it to the museum to be selling for me $1, $2. That is how they see my, that is my first breakthrough. What year was that? That is 1970. Wow. 1970. That is about 49 years ago. 1970, when they took my work to the US, the woman will come back with $5, $10 for me. I was so happy that eh, this thing can become money. So he said the particular work they like is the one I call Eggla. <laughs> so I want to say a bird with the egg. Then I say Eggla, Eggla. <laughs> Do you have that art here now? Uh, I have it in the, you know, somebody bought it. That woman in it is the curator of the African. Museum of African Art in the Museum of Natural History. So that work itself is her own collection. So they now say, who made this? He said, it's done by this woman. And they said they are looking for a female artist to come to US and they cannot find a female. Then he said, this is the work of the female. So it's on hand woman. We call it Peleke. Peleke is the cloth they are making for a lay one. It's on hand woven. I will weave the fabric. After I weave it, I will come and put the adire on top of it, which is hand painted with chicken feather and cassava paste. So they now take me to US for weaving, women's loom. And that is what I went to teach in 1974 in US. So getting there, I see life through art. And that is my first breakthrough. That so this work I'm doing can carry me to abroad. They pay for my ticket, give me money. Then they say take something cold to go. I don't have money. I go to Bend and Boutique, Tokumbo. The used cloth is what I went to buy to just be able to wear something. I wear flip flop to go because I don't have shoe. And when I get there, all the people in my class, they are all male. Then I said, this is for women, it's not for men. They said, yeah, this is African America. What man do, a woman do better there, that a man can learn with me. Then I said, yeah, but the men's loom is different. They said, no, this is America. Then I said, okay. So all the work that the men are doing here, and they said it's for women. No, no, it's for men alone. A woman can also try it when I get back. All what the men do, I also want to do the same thing. I explore it. I started doing beadwork. I started painting because I'm only allowed to do textile before. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. So beading was beading. for men. Yes, it's for men. It's men, the men that it's men that who beat. do crown. Crown and yes. all those things. So yes. when you came back. So I started doing it. And then they said, oh, it's a taboo. I said, well, really? they do it in America. <laughs> <laughs> he said what? I, I said they do it in America. They, they said it's America. a taboo. <laughs> a woman should not learn how to even work on steel work. You know steel work? Yes, 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 yes. I sent my daughter to learn that too. Because I see a, a woman doing it in American Virgin Island. So they said, no, it's a taboo. I said, well, a, man is, a woman is doing it in America. So <laughs> I can start it here too. So I become a river. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank God today because God is always behind me. I take risk of so many things. But today I always thank God that all the risk I took, it come. Once you just have a focus and you know what you want, you will always get there.
Okay, and then that's Egla. 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 <laughs> that's Egla. That's Egla. Okay. You, will never, you will never try to, you know, replicate it again? I try to do it even on the on the beadwork as well. And I weave it on the loom. I try to do it so many ways. And well, sometimes they will say, what else do you do? I say, snake, python, python. I love to draw snake because my father killed so many snakes for meat. So <laughs> when they say, what type of meat do you like best? I will say, snake. <laughs> Python. Okay, so so many of your drawings actually, you know, came from things that you see around you, yes. things that you know you have uh, experienced. Yes. I mean, live with like the Python that you talked about. Yes. And then uh, th that's where is that where your inspiration yes. come from? Yes. My inspiration come from my dream and the story the our parents used to tell us around the villages, what, even if you see a snake, how you can kill a snake, a snake doesn't bother you, if you don't touch the, if you don't step on them, they will, you can be living with snake. So there is so many stories. Then I started to put them in drawing. Then I also do a lot of abule, abule series, which is the village scene, the two or three houses in the farm. Every family have abule in Abeokuta. When you even meet people from Ogun State, and you, if you if he tell you it's from Ogun State, you say, what is the name of your Abba? So if he can tell you, you know it's a typical Ogun State person. You, you, do you, you grew up in Ogun State? No, I know Abu We have a whole lot of things about Ogun State. Yeah. About people yeah, because I grew up, I go to all the 50, I have been to all the 30 states in Nigeria with the Indian woman who was my boss. We travel to Agenebo, the whole Sabongida, or then go to Tugubo, Ida. All these places we travel to. They are the one who brought me to Lagos first too. Then I say, oh, and then anywhere we go, we stay with them. They will say, when you finish this embroidery, I would like to buy it. Then I say, okay, somebody can be making little, little money from this. Okay, I just stick to them. I was so honest with them, and I was learning because they teach me how to be clean and tidy and to be straight. Don't lie, don't lie. They said, work hard, you can make it. And they always praise me, Monica, money, when they are happy. Okay, Monica. <laughs> and my Baptist name is Monica. Monica, yeah. Monica, mm -hmm. uh, that is wonderful, wow. Well, this is how many? Floors. This is four floor of artwork, and we have twenty five thousand pieces here. Twenty five thousand pieces, pieces of, of artwork, artwork from the, from five thousand Nigerian artists. Wow! So we have a storage at the back. We have art in uh, extension at El Scott. Then we also have art with one of my son in Houston, Texas. He's going to open a gallery there. And my other son is in Atlanta. He's okay. going to open a gallery there too. And we also have some in Iowa, Iowa City. So the art we have here, we don't even have enough room. I have four galleries in Nigeria. Okay, but you have the one that is inside of this gallery. It's 25,000 pieces. 25,000 pieces. Pieces. Yes. Okay. And it's done by different artists. artists. My own is not up to 100 there. Okay, and your own is? Uh, my, I work with beads, beads, bead work. I work with textile. Okay. I do watercolor and I do pen and ink with my brother. That one behind you there. The top is my own alone. The bottom what? is myself. Those work, the big, the yellow one yes. is my own alone. That is the type of work we are exhibiting now at the Smithsonian. Museum of African Art in Washington, D.C. Mm. And the one down is myself and my brother. Okay, that you're... is Ben and Nick, my brother. Okay, you we work are... together like collaboration. You are like related. The film. Yes, yes. You are related. Yes. Same parents? No, but it's just when we say brother. Brother, I, I, know. Yes, okay, yes, yes, I understand. Yes, yes. I understand. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 
Okay, so yours is not up to 100? No, no, then. or the work I have here is not up to 100. Uh, up to 100, uh, okay. I mean, the drawings? Yes, frames. The, I will show you some of the... Uh, the work uh, that you have? Uh, yes. Okay, the 25,000 pieces, pieces of art yes. is, does not include... No, not the textile. It doesn't include it, it's no, just the no. art pieces painting. of uh, painting, painting and yes. carvings and all yes. those things. Yes. Wow. So now, what you do here is, like even a newbie, a fresher an artist can bring a work yes. and then, you know, do they pay to submit their artwork here? No. We have a center in Oshogo. We make a gallery there for them so they can do their work and also sell it in the gallery. They pick two, two, two from their... What we do is training the trainers. After okay. we train you, you train other people, but any work you send, the money belongs to you. When the outsider, like senior artists, when they bring their work here, we have to pay them 15% to show their work. But for the people who just want to bring you their work, you pay them to showcase senior their work. One, senior yes, artists, okay. we have to. Okay. Because you know they don't have many, and we want their presence to be there. Okay. So then we have some artists, they, when they sell their work, they give us 10%. Okay. The so 5% is for government, and 10% for us. Okay, so that's 15% yes. altogether. Yes. Okay, and those senior ones, when they bring their the work? Fi the 5% we charge the person who buy. Oh, okay. But, okay, that's but the vast. Okay. But more what we have here is just for Nigeria to see the creativity of Nigeria. It's not of buying much, but to see what Nigeria can do and see the work of Nigeria in one place. You can see 5,000 Nigerian artists work in one place. And that is our great achievement for us to be able to package it well for them, let people see what they are doing, and let people come and explore to see, it. look at the wood, what Nigeria can bring out of the wood. And then when you look at the artists, when they come every Sunday or Saturday, they are just so happy to see their work on the wall display well. You know, in the studio, you don't really see the beauty of the work. But when you put it in the gallery, they are looking at it, they are happy. So a lot of them just come to see how their work is displayed. And we, the other gallery in Abuja is smaller than this one. Smaller. Uh, but we are going to have the biggest gallery. That is my next goal. The biggest gallery will be in Abuja, where we can showcase at least 50,000 pieces at a time. At a time, yeah. We have a gallery in Oshogo, Oshogo with the well. workshop. Uh, the Oshogo one of Shun State is the capital, so it's my headquarter. We have students from different schools, University, Abia, Cross River, just different parts. They come there to learn the textile and painting. When they finish school and they cannot get a job, they just do it as regular job. Okay. So it's a job. Some also work here. So some of them actually, after we train them, we ask them to come and learn how to sell their work. Okay. So when they come, like mentoring, so they can be able to face the customer and sell their work directly to the customer. So you're actually passing it down. Yes. Leaving a legacy, you know, because you're just the only <laughs> maker that I know. You're just one, you're not two. Uh, and we should have... Yes, I want to call on. Yes, I want people to call on some plenty from me. So. Yes, because we need to, you know, ha see this often. We need to have this ambience. We need to have this, you know, creativity. We need to have this warm welcome. You know, whenever we, you know, visit a, a gallery, this is my first time, and the kind of reception that I received when I came in here is second to none. It's second to don't know they will dance for you, clap, a cabo, a cabo. You know when people take time from okay. no time, they go into the traffic. They hustle, in the, they are thirsty, and they come 
first of all, customer service is very important in Nigeria. So that is why I like to welcome them. Do you like something cool to drink? So they feel good and say, oh, I don't come here for nothing. It's not the buying. But to take like time from no time to just come and visit and see our... In those days when people come to see us in the gallery in Oshogo, just to shake our hand alone, they make our day. Wow. Just to shake our hand and say, oh, your work is beautiful. That make our day. And you didn't have a lot of people coming at that time. Yes, no. There, were no, there was no awareness. No. And the people who come, they are just expatriate. But now our Nigeria are coming. I'm so excited to see young girls. <laughs> like in you know, us. Yes. yes. They, they come on their own, they just want to look around. Yes. I was very impressed. Yes. Because you might think it's only you know older people that love arts. And I see the kind of reception, the warm reception that they receive. Yes. Is that what you do all the time? Because, um, I mean, you are you're such a mother. Oh. When I see this young girl, they are our future. The boys, they are our future. And what we are trying to do is to educate them that this art is something that can also bring them peace in future. If you are an artist and you have it in born in you, do it as your second job. You can be a lawyer. But do your art as a part-time because it's what makes you happy. So you see them coming to take picture. They are just so happy to be with the art, which is a great achievement for us now as a grandmother because we are already at our departure hall. So when these people, <laughs> when these people <laughs> take over, no, we are happy. Back nowhere. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. Your flight, so, your flight will oh, be delayed. Thank you. <laughs> the flight, they, oh, they said the flight is delayed. Oh, uh, indefinitely. You. Celebrities, yes. personalities have walked through that door. Yes. Hmm. I will say starting from Sonia Day, the king of Juju music, Ebenezer Obey, then the king of Morocco, who is also an art lover, and he come to Nigeria to actually sign for uh, fertilizer. And that is how, because of the art, he decided to spend three and a half weeks in Lagos. Every day he come here and he buy artwork. By the time he was about to leave, we introduced him to seven galleries, market, and he bought and bought and bought. It's one of the greatest celebrities. Then we have Genevieve, the Oluchi. Wow. Uh, I love Genevieve. Uh, all these are our film actress. Even two come today. Uh, Davido, all of them, they always come here and they, they are happy. Whiskey, uh, these people know all their names. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so we are always happy to receive them because they are our icon. And yes, we are they happy are. for they them to us come. proud, really. They, they are. They make icon. us proud. They, yes. When I get to Ken, uh, South Africa, they say, Are you? Uh, Aki and Popo, where are they? So <laughs> when you look at that, you feel joy that this is. I was in Kenya. They even have a place for Nigerian television, Niger. They call it Niger. And really? I have been going to Kenya since 1967. But when I went this year, there is a Niger uh, film. I mean, uh, on their television, Niger yeah. station. It's lovely. It's really, really lovely. And all these guys that come in, do they buy the arts or uh, just come to look actually, around? Actually, some of them come for the first time just to admire what mm. we have. And the people who actually buy, they will just come and they will say, oh, can I have the picture of this? Send it to me. I want to show it to my wife. Then the wife will say yes or no. And then they will say, OK, can mm. you send it to me with DHL or? Women will always approve. Yes. They need the approval. Yeah, that is why I'm happy that they follow the voice of their artwork. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most expensive artwork that you have here? Uh, the most expensive one we have here is 50, let's say 30 million. 30 million Naira? Yes. Wow. Where is it? Oh. It's, uh, we have one on the corner here, and we have one there. Okay. Uh, I will show you. Later. Okay. Anybody can, I mean, is it affordable? Do you have affordable? I have here? something of 500 naira. We start from 500 naira. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. So there's always something 500 for 500 naira, 1,000 naira, up to 30 million. Wow. Yeah. 
and that artwork is done by a Nigerian. In Nigeria. Even there is one of our female artists now, the daughter of Akunene, Cosby. If you just go on Google, her work, City, I'm joining you. I'm <laughs> too far from, from you. <laughs> the, her work is going for 3.5, 3.4 million dollars, which is 1.2 billion naira. 1.2 billion naira. That is one Nigerian female. She break the world record in Africa. Her name is Njidika. When you go on Google and Cosby, immediately you just say up uh, Njidika, they will say Cosby. That is a, and the painting, the title of that painting is called Baby Bush. We are both having an exhibition now at the Smithsonian. Her piece there is 2.4 million at the Smithsonian now. Dollar, not Naira, dollar. So you know when it goes to uh, Naira, is uh, the last one go for 1.2 billion Naira. So artists like uh, priceless, people decide the price of the artist, not the artist themselves. I can tell you I will sell this my work for 50,000 and then they put it in the auction. So he will beat, you will beat, another person will beat, and then they start to raise your price. So those are the people who make the price of the artist, not the artist themselves. Thank you so thank you. much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, yes, it's beautiful.